The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets. A reason why I decided it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Erica. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Great. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to you, too. Adam called it Friday Eve. Is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's Welcome make it. to Friday Eve. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a regular worker, you can totally relate to the sentiments behind that. Yep. Now, this is something else that we can look forward to. Uh, if you've been to anything like Restaurant Week in different cities across the yep. world, this is surprisingly similar. Mm-hmm. It's the Seoul version, 2022 Seoul Gourmet Week. So excited. <laughs> I go every year. But anyways, the 2022 edition of the annual Seoul Gourmet Week is going to kick off tomorrow oh. on Friday. Uh, a team of 20 food experts have selected 100 restaurants in the city of Seoul. Mm. And uh, during this week-long event, mm. participating restaurants will be offering special menus and lots of I don't know, benefits, perks? Perks? Uh, yeah. I always think accessibility is an easy one because mm. uh, sometimes gourmet can be a little bit intimidating. Yep. This is like for you to tread the shallow waters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's a great deal of variety, uh-huh. right? And as you've said, experts giving us kind of the, the short list. Yep. Where can we check out the list of participating restaurants? Good question. The complete list is currently available on Seoul Gourmet Week's official website, mm-hmm. which includes uh, brief introductions to each of the restaurant's signature dishes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also great news for vegans. Times really are changing. Oh. There are plant-based options to choose from as well. I know some of our listeners tuning in from abroad might yeah. thinking, why is that new? Uh, for, for Seoul setting, there were always efforts. Yep. It was always kind of a niche set mm-hmm. of restaurants, but there's just greater demand yes. from consumers yep. and it's reflected in this year's soul and the quality week. of vegan dishes yes. is definitely on the rise going yes. up i i gotta fake some of my friends into believing yes yes this is meat yep yep <laughs> <laughs> there will be more than just whining and dining during the week-long event yeah. it turns out this year yeah this weekend for example they're gonna screen some films oh. about food and they've all been carefully selected and uh, the screenings are free of charge and it's going to take place at the oil tank culture parks outdoor deck in western seoul uh the films range from documentary on the world's first restaurant to behind the scenes look at kitchens. Sustainable gastronomy is a big keyword these days. Mm. And screenings will take place every two hours starting at 11 a.m. Mm. And the final screening for the day will begin at 5 p.m. on Saturday mm. and 6 p.m. on Sunday. That is this weekend. Uh, remember how we talked about farmer's markets just a few days ago? Yeah. A farmer's market is also going to be set up at the same location at the oil Oil Tank Culture Park during this period. They checked off all the boxes. Yep, yep. So grocery shopping, good uh-huh. food, great film. Now, if the weather is perfect, at least according to this week's forecast, it's going to be nice. Yes. All right. So, so how long does it go on for? <laughs> <laughs> so from Saturday through uh, October 6th. Okay. And uh, during this period, uh, well-known chefs are going to temporarily set up shop at five traditional markets mm-hmm. here in Seoul, including Gumnam Shijang, Seoul Central Market, Yongcheon Shijang, Majang Shijang, and Yongdong Shijang. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're going to use fresh ingredients all procured mm-hmm. right there at the market <laughs> to prepare dishes on site that visitors can sample for free. So there have been more efforts by regional governments to kind of amp up these markets, yep. make it a little bit more sparkly and appealing for not just visitors, but locals too. And Correct. this is it. Yep. Bring, in, bring in well-known chefs yep. and, and make sure that it feels trendy too yes. and of the time. And I love that they're going to be at traditional markets, yes. not just in some fancy michelin starred restaurant kitchens. Save the traditional yep. markets. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a time when we, we were just all about get rid of the old, bring in the new. Yep. And I think the younger generation is demanding a little bit more than that. Yep. They appreciate well, the old, basically. Exactly. Yep. We appreciate the old, <laughs> apparently. Uh, what other events can foodies look forward to? I can't believe, Erica, I've never been to Seoul Gourmet Week. Uh, you should. <laughs> Highly recommended. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, I, I said dining and whining, so I haven't mentioned anything about whining yet. Mm. But uh, there, uh, the Seoul Gallery, located in Bukchon, is going to hold uh, traditional liquor tasting sessions, mm. uh, makgeolli brewing workshops oh. throughout the festival period. Uh, tasting sessions are 
are free. Uh, if you want to take uh, part in these workshops, mm. you'll have to pay 5,000 won per person, which is not too much. Kind of affordable. Yes. <laughs> um, there's also going to be a chef bartender collaboration titled Korean Spirit, <laughs> uh, which will host uh, three gastronomic dinners on Saturday evening, uh, one at a two Michelin star restaurant in Gangnamgu mm. on Sunday evening, starting at 5.30 p.m. Mm. Three sessions of Korean French dinners will be presented at another Michelin star restaurant, mm. also located in southern Seoul. Uh, didn't mention the name of the restaurants, but you can check uh, <laughs> online and uh, also check for availability and make reservations on the app Catch Table. Okay, so it's not about promoting a particular no. uh, restaurant, and they probably don't require it anyway. Right. Uh, it's fierce to get these tickets in yes, the first place. Indeed. However, I, I, I'm all about clever titles mm-hmm. that stick. Korean spirit is... Yeah. Good job. Job all done. Yes. Uh, I do have to mention that uh, these dinners are on the expensive side, mm. 400,000 won per person. <laughs> but this is, you know, fine dining, all the best ingredients. And uh, these are really well-known chefs. So kind of expected. Yep. Um, but I mean, if you want to treat yourself, which apparently the next generation is all about. Yeah. This is it. Yes. This is your moment. Yep. <laughs> All right. Changing seasons require us to take a look at, well, the changing trees. <laughs> now, the foul smelling ginkgo nuts. It does prompt our heads to tilt a little bit every fall season. Yeah. And there has been efforts to kind of, I don't know, remedy the situation. Yeah. It's already started. There are ginkgo nuts strewn all over the sidewalk. It's and kind of stinky. People walk on them, yeah. they get crushed, they stick to the bottom of your shoes, and mm. uh, that smell follows you everywhere you go, <laughs> basically. It's quite unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. so uh, by the end of this month, Hodemungu District here in western Seoul plans to bring out a large rig, a machine to remove the nuts from the trees before they fall. But uh, I don't know, I already started seeing mm. those, uh, you know, the fallen nuts everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, that's their plan. They uh, they're going to bring out this like gigantic claw. It looks like a claw, basically. <laughs> and uh, what they do is the machine grips the tree trunk and uh-huh. shakes it vigorously, right? And then it falls on the nuts. Yeah, it causes the tree to release the nuts from its branches. And then they, they fall actually on the ground. And then the, the cleanup crew is on standby. Uh-huh. They run there uh-huh. and then they pick up all the nuts. <laughs> all the nuts. <laughs> now, to target as many trees in the district as possible, the office also began employing other methods as well. Okay. Uh, one of which is what you just mentioned. They're going to install these antenna-like nets below ah, the branches uh-huh. of the trees uh-huh. at uh, six local areas in the district. So the ginkgo nuts will fall into the nets instead mm. of falling to the ground and causing a mess. And they can just gather it all at once right. and toss it or utilize it. Can we utilize it? Ginkgo I, nuts are delicious. Right. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Don't be fooled by how foul <laughs> it smells once you crush it with right. your own shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, once you get past the original yep. scent, when it's cooked, it's delicious. When they're roasted especially. Now, starting next month in October, uh, the district is also going to replace 40 female ginkgo trees Mm. in the Chungjongno area with male trees because Mm. male trees do not bear fruit. Mm. Uh, The office has counted over 3,100 ginkgo trees in Sodemungu district. 1,341 of them Mm. are female. That's uh, a little under half of the trees. Uh, The authorities have said that they have uh, been gradually replacing the female trees with male trees in recent years. Okay, so that's a lot of ginkgo trees. So I yep. can see why I thought the Mungu district had to yes. roll their sleeves and say, okay, let's do something about it. Yeah. It's it been... does get pretty messy. <laughs> <laughs> Without the scent, uh, do you think we'd be eating more ginkgo nuts? Because I think yes. Uh, I think so. Was this nature's yeah, way of preserving it? A lot of people are put off on? by the smell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, on to saving the pine trees. If you've seen the pictures, it is disheartening to say the least. Uh, from afar, they look like foliage. Yeah. Look closer, they're dying pine trees. I mean, the temperatures during the day, they, they reach, what, close to 30, 27, yep. 28 degrees yep. still. It's still very, very warm. And we're still more than a month uh, away from the uh, the, the foliage season. Yeah. And uh, if you head over to Pohang, the, the pine tree covered mountains and hills are already starting to turn color, ah. you know, deep orange and uh, brown. In fact, this uh, phenomenon started all the way back in June, actually. Okay. Now, according to a local environmental group, an estimated 2 million pine trees are turning brown after being infected with something called pine wilt disease. Okay, let's talk about how bad the damage is first. Yes, um, Green Korea United, which is an environmental group, says it is close to the levels of 2013 and 2014 when over 2 million 
evergreen trees were oh. infected. This time they say it might be even more. Okay. Uh, the group has been conducting on-site uh, observations and drone observations across mm. the country since June. Mm. And uh, it discovered that over 2 million pine trees were infected with pine wilt disease. So Poang is a southern port city. So yes. you can see why warmth and climate change might affect that region first. Uh-huh. But are pine trees in other areas also affected? Uh, the southeastern regions, uh-huh. including Busan, Pohang, and Gyeongju, are the hardest hit. Uh, some of the damaged forests are designated as world heritage and cultural heritage protection areas. Mm-hmm. What's scary is the infection is actually moving northwards, mm-hmm. uh, quickly spraying to other areas near Seoul and Gangwon, the province. We're supposed to have cooler, yeah. milder temperatures, yes. so the pine trees have a better chance of surviving. Yep. Uh, what causes this particular disease? Well, it's caused by this tiny little worm called pinewood nematodes. And uh, these tiny worms are parasites of long-horned beetles, and they infest uh, host tree branches during their spring uh, feeding season. And these worms reproduce really quickly, Mm -hmm. and they clog the tree's vascular system, which means it disrupts the tree's water and nutrient flow, Uh and that eventually leads to the death of the host tree. I I wonder then, is there a cure for this in emphasis trees? Because it's it's kind of a regular phenomenon, just not at the scale. Right. right. Unfortunately, there is no cure once it's affected. The the rate of trees dying is 100%. Uh, there's no cure. And if left unmanaged, the disease can quickly spread to infect over 40 to 50% of the country's pine tree population. And in the worst case scenario, the dead tree's roots could weaken the stability of the mountain slopes, and uh, that could cause landslides in the event of future torrential rains. Okay, so it poses a real danger yep. uh, in a number of different ways. What is causing the sudden spread of the disease? Yes, uh, according experts. One of the reasons is climate change. Are you surprised? No. Mm. Uh, The average spring temperature has gone up due Mm. to global warming, and this has activated the reproduction and spread of insects that carry these parasitic worms. Uh, Experts say recent droughts and typhoons have also weakened the immune system of trees, Mm. uh, disrupting their resin secretion. Uh, Several local governments have also halted on-site monitoring. Mm. Uh, This happened during the pandemic and uh, had failed to take precautionary pests control measures. So it's not just one reason, but a bunch of reasons. Okay, let's get back to tracking how how severe the damages will be, and we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Erica. Pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.